welcome to another video. Well, we've had the Xbox Series X in the house for two weeks now, and we thought we'd share a few uh, thoughts and impressions in case you're considering it for your Christmas list. Please note these are opinions, so they're worth what you paid for them. But anyway, let's get going with the positives and negatives after two weeks. First, gotta say the graphics and power are great. It's got excellent picture quality. We've played on both a 1080p and a 4K TV. We just don't have the... 120. Yeah, we don't have that super HDMI 2.1 stuff, but we do have a 4K. And here's a comparison. Um, what do you think the best looking game you've played is? Probably the um, Grounded. Grounded. Yeah, I mean, I can tell that the uh, rendering and stuff looks much better on the 4K TV. That's the game Grounded. The games you seem to be playing, though, don't really stretch the graphics capability. But, you know, looking at the box, it's got a lot of capabilities. I think it's got a lot of power under the hood. Hopefully we'll see more games that uh, stretch that. What do you think? Pretty good. Yeah. So our next cool thing on this Xbox is Game Pass. Is this the Netflix of games? Well, it is sort of like Netflix. You go see what you want. You get a trailer and you install it just like installing a... I want a, um, a Battlefield game from the old Xbox 360, 1943 right here. Yeah, yeah. I want you, that. You can, you can, you know, it's just like installing an app on your phone. You just click it and hit install. There's tons of games available. It was only a dollar for the first month. And you can see some of these are tagged with like Xbox 360. Games that are optimized for the new Xbox have this X or S marker on to let you know that they're optimized for the Xbox One S or Xbox One X. But anyway, so it's it's a dollar for the first month and they have the Game Pass tag Eek, on there. Five days to Fridays. Oh. Yeah. There are some negatives to this, which we'll talk about in a second, but on the positive side, you know, it's a dollar and you've downloaded what, 15 Goats games? Goats and 18. You've downloaded 18 games already this would not have been possible if you, on the old model where you're just paying fifty dollars a game just to try these things out that easily wow check this out you guys freaking goat simulator on xbox it's a goat anyway so you like the game pass ultimate uh-huh and we're watching a trailer of goat sim Another cool thing about this is you can play with your friends who may not have the Xbox Series X. You can talk with them and play those games, and, and it all works online. Like, what's a game you played with your friends already? Um, sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. So that's an, you also played an old one like Battlefront 2, right? Yeah, Battlefront 2. Yeah, anyway. Also, it's cool. This is an entertainment box. You can browse the web. It has a Blu-ray player, not just any Blu-ray player, but a 4K UHD Blu-ray player. And uh, what you Worth get... the $500. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. But the point is, you can get other content on this box besides games. So if you're going to put it in a room with the TV, you don't have to worry about the TV having like apps or, you know, some other Roku box or something. Okay, now let's move on to the negatives. Almost immediately after plugging the Xbox in, the Xbox itself and then one of the games gave us a couple of sales pitches immediately. I don't like that annoying corporate stuff. I mean, I just spent 500 bucks on this thing. Don't try to sell me something else for at least a day. Then on this Rocket League game, you get this. It's a pages and pages of licensing agreements. I mean, come on, it's a game machine. This is not fun. I don't wanna see this in the middle of a game. In addition, there was another game that required an additional account that had to be linked to your Xbox account. It's like, there must not be a lot of restrictions for game developers to use the features of the platform, so. That just wasn't fun. The next negative I sort of found, and again, this is an opinion, is that it sort of prefers the lone gamer with his own screen or over the more traditional old school approach where multiplayer means just pick up a second controller and play with somebody there in the room. A lot of times it's easier to find a bunch of strangers to play with than just to find a game that supports playing split screen with somebody in your own family. It's kind of more of an opt out of online than opt in. Like you were playing this pirate ship game and somebody just got on your ship, right? Yeah, I was playing with my friend, and someone got on my ship, and we attacked him, and um, we sunk his ship, and we found a but crate he just, of um, tea. But he just got on your ship without you knowing. You had to go turn off the crew first. Anyway, but we did eventually find some games like Battlefront that you could play in split screen or online. What were some other games that you could play with two people, two controllers in the same? It was this moving, there was this moving up game and there was a sandbox game. Yeah, yeah. So from a from a parent point of view, pay attention because it seems like by default you're online. Also, you know, it's hard to tell which games up front actually support a dual on-screen mode. And my final negative point, and this may seem minor, but you know, after just two weeks, we killed brand new batteries in both controllers. So you might want to invest in rechargers, but in general, this is a platform that you're gonna to have to learn how to manage resources pretty quickly. What I mean by that is not only the battery, but you've got this environment where you're just downloading stuff on a whim. You don't have to, it's not like you're going to 
have to commit to this game and learn about it in advance. You just download it. So it eats up the storage pretty quickly. So after two weeks, we're already at 48% of our terabyte storage that came with this. Now this is something to consider if you're trying to decide between the Xbox Series S and the Series X because the Series S only comes with half the storage of the X and it requires a custom storage upgrade if you want to upgrade. But the cost of that upgrade is just about the price difference between the S and the X. So just something to keep in mind there. Anyway, that about wraps it up. And I don't want to end on a negative thought. So let's go to like, we've had it for two weeks. What's your most favorite game that you found uh, in these two weeks? And uh, let's let's close up the video with a description of that. My favorite game is this game called Subnautica. It's where you're on an alien planet and you have to survive underwater and build ba a base. Kind of like a Minecraft uh, with better graphics underwater. But it looks pretty cool. And how long have you been playing this? For a while. And, and I'm in creative mode right now in this game. Um, anyway, that's about it. You like the Xbox, don't you? Uh-huh. We'll see you next, next time for another awesome video. Bye.